Uh, thank you, Steve. <clears throat> I've noticed this new schedule, so I will read rather fast. It's called Seizing the Cosmic Moment. I remember a few, a few years ago when Reverend Jim Lawson gave the morning talk at ICUJP, and in particular his description of the problems facing humanity as being, in his words, almost insurmountable. It was then, and even more so now, hard to disagree. I found myself reminded of those words two weeks ago when the perennial wound of Israel and Palestine was again discussed within ICUJP, with the additional issue of Black Lives Matter also being raised. That same day, I learned that almost half the country is already in early summer under some kind of drought, with a quarter of California experiencing exceptional drought, while the nation's largest reservoir, Lake Mead, in Nevada and Arizona, is at its lowest level since the Hoover Dam was built almost a century ago. Snowpacks in the southwestern United States are at just 2% of normal. Human conflict, injustice, and the consequences of climate change are just a few of the almost insurmountable problems which we now face as a planet, and yet with an ever-growing urgency to resolve them. Coming back to the discussion of two weeks ago regarding Israel and Palestine, I was reminded of something else I remember hearing a few years ago. I was asked by the person in question what I thought was most important to herself, being a woman, being human, or being Jewish. I remember the conversation mainly because I was surprised and somewhat shocked by her answer that being Jewish was more important than anything including, so it seemed, being human. While it's not for me to judge that, it seems that we are all shaped by our beliefs, and it is this, to my mind, more than anything, which has led not just to our current challenges, but also to the fact that we should now find them almost insurmountable. Which is why I am more than a little interested and encouraged by the anticipated release from the Pentagon of its files regarding what are widely termed as unidentified flying objects, or as they are now more officially known, as unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs, which includes that popular term of flying saucers coined by, coined by aviator Kenneth Arnold in 1947, after he witnessed several disc-shaped objects flying over Washington state. The military, in part for being the military, has always maintained, at least outwardly, that these UAPs are something made by the Chinese or Russians, even though they demonstrate a technology that is decades and even centuries, if not millennia, ahead of our own. Similarly, similarly the global establishments have always had a difficulty in accepting they could actually come from another world. As Winston Churchill is reputed to have said to General Eisenhower, following a spectacular sighting during World War II, this event should be immediately classified since it would create mass panic amongst the general population and destroy one's belief in the church. But is it just possible that all that is now beginning to change? As Luis Elizondo, the former director for the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, explained to the Washington Post earlier this month, these craft could be from outer space, inner space, or the space in between. As we begin to learn what quantum physics is, and we begin to understand our place here on this little planet, we begin to realize that there are a lot of other options. Let us just suppose for a moment that at least some of these craft do indeed come from an alien world. What would, would be the implications for humanity? With just a little thought, we can begin to see that it would call into question just about everything we have ever believed and understood about ourselves. Indeed, it would, in the words of another founding figure of ICUJP, Dr. John Cobb, cause us to rethink everything. No longer would we be the observers of the universe, but the observed, and by something at least technologically far superior to ourselves. 
the mere fact that we have never yet been harmed by such alien intelligence would imply a benevolence. And if for good measure, we were to include another mystery of our times, that of crop circles, we could also speculate and even presume that such alien intelligence contacting this earth is not just peaceful, but also capable of demonstrating art, science, geometry, and a breathtaking skill and beauty which can elevate us all. So is it just possible that in this 11th hour, when the doomsday clock is closer to midnight than at any other time, less than two minutes away and ticking, that humanity is being presented with a whole new reality, a reality which, if openly addressed and examined, has the potential to transform us all to a radical new way of thinking and understanding about ourselves, our science, our philosophy, our place in the universe, and even our understanding of God. No longer need we view ourselves quite so fundamentally as Jew or Palestinian, black or white, English or American, rich or poor, but instead see ourselves collectively as human beings, together sharing this sacred planet we all call home. Such a concept has driven my own philosophical and spiritual understanding for almost all my adult life and been my overriding cause. For besides awakening to a much wider reality, nothing else to my mind has the sufficient capability to so wonderfully and magnificently unite and inspire the human race such that we can redress with collective responsibility the overwhelming and almost insurmountable challenges we are now forced to face. Thank you.